There are seemingly countless good running backs across the NFL, and there is always a debate about who is better than who and where they rank amongst each other. And in today's video, we are going to discuss where the top five running backs in the NFL rank, who they are, and why they rank specifically where they do. There will be some heated fans with the rankings of the running backs, because we can think of six or seven great running backs in the NFL off the top of our heads, yet they can all not make the video, and we will explain a couple that are left out at the end, and without further ado, let's begin. And we're going to start today's video with Joe Mixon of the Cincinnati Bengals. Entering 2021, Joe had always been a solid back, as he had two 1,000-yard seasons in 2018 and 19, and two 1,100-yard seasons at that, but was injured in 2020 and played just six games. And in 2021, Mixon, like everyone else on the offense, raised their game, including Joe. Believe it or not, he had a 1,500 total yard season last year, and out of any of the running backs, that had a good season in 2021, I feel like Mixon's was the most under the radar, and not only did he have 1,500 total yards, he had 16 total touchdowns, which was only four less than Jonathan Taylor, and we all know the type of year he had last year. Joe Burrow was entering a pivotal year in his career, as he was coming off of an ACL injury, and the Bengals needed to step up, and not only did Joe Burrow and Jamar obviously step up and rise to the occasion, Joe Mixon did as well. Mixon only had three games of over 100 yards rushing last year, and five at or above 90 yards, but the Bengals were 5-0 in those games. And I like Joe and think he can have an even more productive season this year from a yard standpoint, as there were games where Joe Mixon was not good, and he obviously was not the reason the Bengals lost some games last year solely, but he isn't a perfect player by any stretch of the imagination either. Having a 16 touchdown season is insanely good for any player, but he had seven games with 60 or less rushing yards, and since he was just three and four in those games. And the immediate thought is with this is, well, they weren't close, and since he needed to throw the ball to kind of get back in the game, and that's not always the case, as in these games Mixon ran for under 60 yards, he had at least 10 carries in every one of those games, and had at least 17 carries in three of the seven. Mixon has to be better in some of those games, but he is a good running back entering 2022, and the future for him and the Bengals look bright, and Joe comes in today's video at number five. Four is Minnesota Vikings running back Dalvin Cook, and over the past few years, Dalvin has amassed over 3,800 total yards and 35 rushing touchdowns over those three years, and has been a very big part of the Vikings offense. He's not quite the receiving back like you see with other backs across the league, but he holds his own in that area, as he has over 130 receptions and 1,100 yards receiving over the past three years. You see a lot of the time with Dalvin that he's good, but, or yeah, he's a talented player, but he can't stay healthy, or this or that, and I agree with that. It is what it is. He unfortunately hasn't been able to play a full season at this point in his career, and at this point, I'd be shocked if he did. I'm obviously rooting for it, but five seasons is pretty telling. But he had over 1,150 yards rushing in 2021 in 13 games, and had that translated to a full 17-game season, he would have had his second 1,500-yard season of his career, and with how much hype and noise there is around Derrick Henry, understandably so, by the way, it would have almost been a side note that Dalvin had back-to-back 1,500-yard -back years. And on top of it, he was projected, based on his stats from a 13-game season, to have had nearly 300 receiving yards, so we're talking about a near 1,800-yard season. But in 2020, he did have a year where he had over 1,900 total yards and 17 total touchdowns, and this may be a tad surprising, or maybe you've never given it a whole lot of thought, but Dalvin is coming off of three straight Pro Bowls and will play this season at just 27 years old. The Vikings, for the first time in a while, have a solid offensive line and look to have two good starters at tackle in Christian Darisol and Brian O'Neill, and especially O'Neill, and Ezra Cleveland, one of the guards, could be a longtime starter as well. The other two positions are not great, but Dalvin is a great running back, and the past few years have shown that. At this point, I mean, we are five seasons in, and Dalvin has been injured in every year so far, so 
He will probably miss a game or two this year, unfortunately, but if he can play 13 or 14 games like he did last year, he will rack up another 1,100 yard rushing season at minimum and have another two to 300 yards receiving and finish this year as a 14 or 1,500 yard total back with what will probably equate to 11 or 12 touchdowns. If in the chance he plays all 17 games, then this guy is the limit and 2,000 total yards is not out of the equation. Remember, he had over 1,900 in 2020 in just 14 games. And Dalvin comes in today's video at number four. Next up is Nick Chubb of the Cleveland Browns, and when you think of a running back, I do think Nick Chubb is the spitting image. Chubb is a football player by every definition, and is an extremely tough player to bring down, and it shows up on tape time and time again. Seldom does the first tackler bring him down, and Nick, like Dalvin, is a three-time Pro Bowl back, but is not much of a receiving threat as he has just one season above 200 yards receiving and one season above 15 yards receiving per game. I can't say who, but there was a player in the Browns secondary I discussed with within the past year, so it's not like this was three or four years ago. And I asked him essentially, when you're one-on-one -on -one with Nick Chubb coming at you in the open field in practice, how do you tackle the guy or how do you go about it because Chubb is an extremely powerful back and he responded without hesitation, get the hell out of the way. And for the funny clips you hear on Twitter about how a guy is built thick in the lower body and how viral they usually go, this is most definitely the case with Nick Chubb. Now, unfortunately for him, the Browns had an extremely long 2021, none to his doing, and Cleveland missed the playoffs. There were plenty of games last year where Nick played good and other areas of the team did not, and they simply lost. He had an 83-yard, two-touchdown performance against Kansas City in week one, he had a 161 yard game and a touchdown against the Chargers in week five, and he had a 126 yard game on the road in Lambeau against the Packers, in which Baker Mayfield threw not one, not two, not three, but four interceptions, and they lost all three of these games. If you're building a running back to me, Nick Chubb is the spitting image. He dominate in any era and is an absolute handful to deal with, and he comes in today's ranking at number three. Down to the final two, and we are heading to Indy to talk about Colts running back Jonathan Taylor. JT is a player who has dominated from the time he set foot on campus in Madison, Wisconsin, and has not looked back since. In two seasons, he has nearly 3,000 yards rushing, along with 29 rushing touchdowns, and to give you an idea of how much he scores the football, he has as many rushing touchdowns as Devontae Adams has receiving touchdowns over the past two years, and we all know how Devontae is perceived. Jonathan isn't a non-receiving threat either, as he had 36 catches in his rookie season and 40 this past year, and had over 2,100 yards from scrimmage in 2021 alone. And his new teammate and quarterback Matt Ryan will absolutely love him, as Taylor is far and away the most talented back he will have played with for his entire career. He had 10 games of 100 rushing yards last year, and the Colts were 9-1 in those games, meaning they were 0-7 when Taylor did not rush for 100 yards. And one of those games was against the Buffalo Bills, in which Taylor won in the Highmark Stadium and ran for a buck 85 and four scores. And for how loaded the AFC is in 2022, the Colts are going to be a team no one wants to play because of the grit, because of the getting nasty in the trenches, and because of both Quentin Nelson and Jonathan Taylor. Sure, this team lost to the Jags in Week 18, but even Colts fans would acknowledge the Jags give them a shit ton of trouble, and unfortunately they did not make the playoffs last year, but within the 2021 season, they thumped the Bills by four scores, and they went out to San Francisco in a complete shit weather game, and beat a team that went to the NFC Championship game by double digits. They're a very good team, and how Jonathan goes, they go. And I hope he stays healthy long term, because at just 23 years old, the sky is the limit. And I have a feeling a year from now, he will have a different spot in the running back rankings, but for now, he comes in at number two. And we have reached number one, and it is Derrick Henry of the Tennessee Titans. Derrick Henry is a man's man, and while he didn't play the full 2021 season, he had 937 yards in eight games, and I do believe he would have went for 2,000 yards, which would have gave him back-to-back 2,000-yard -back seasons, and he would have been the only player to accomplish this in NFL history. But my biggest thing with Derrick Henry, and why I have him number one, is... Everyone knows what's coming when they play the Tennessee Titans. You're not going into that game as a defensive coordinator saying, we have to stop Ryan Tannehill. 
Those words have not been uttered over the past few years because of the sole focus to stop Derrick Henry. And what's frustrating is knowing it's coming and still not being able to stop it. The Titans never hide what they're doing, and Mike Vrabel doesn't get cute with it and think, how can I hide Derrick Henry and surprise the other team with him in X or Y situation? It is up front, and over the past three years, Henry's rushed for 4,500 yards in 39 games and amassed 43 rushing touchdowns. That doesn't happen by accident, and he comes in today at number one. Now, for the people who are wondering about Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, and Austin Eckler, neither Kamara nor Eckler have ever rushed for a thousand yards in a season, and I want to get something clear, the talent they have is immeasurable, but I can't justify putting those guys as running backs over any of the guys in today's video because of the way they're used. I think they classify more as an offensive weapon, and I mean that in the best way possible. Kamara has four seasons above 80 receptions, Eckler has two seasons above 70 receptions, and Christian McCaffrey has two seasons with more than a hundred receptions. If you're watching this thinking, dude, you're an idiot because they can do more and have proven they can do more, I get it, but I also truly believe they are more of an offensive weapon than they are a true running back. And I'd like to see those teams, the Chargers and Saints specifically, have someone with a playing style like Leonard Fournette be their backup, and not Leonard specifically, of course. But LA did address that with Isaiah Spiller in the draft, but that is my reasonings for not having those three guys specifically in today's video. Now that's all I have for today, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your rankings in the comments, and if you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, because it would truly mean the world. We are closing in on 41,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. And until next time, as always, please be safe, and have a great day. Love you guys.